everybody, Carol here. Welcome back to my channel. So, while I'm showing you all the different items I'm going to use, uh, let me just tell you I'm going to make a cool ring for me. Not uh, It's not a commission or anything. I just wanted to do it. I love rings, so I like to have different rings to put on different times. So, as you see, I'm using uh, black pigment again. And there, those uh, red glitters, that's just one of those little containers that came free with another order. So, I can't even say where, what brand they are, you know. And uh, But you could get them through Amazon, I'm sure. And those little epoxy resin dots, they were uh, an overflow mistake. Well, I did something the day before using regular Long Cure J. Diction epoxy resin mixed with the platinum color. And uh, there were a few drips on my, um, my silicone pad there when I found them. So I was like, wow, these are perfect, perfect little dots. I will use them in my ring. So sometimes, you know, you, you can make really good use of scraps and, and uh, dripped off pieces and such and, and be really creative with it. So here I'm taking off a pick, piece of um, packing tape, shipping tape, whatever you want to call it. I'm using it to wrap around the mandrel because I'm going to use this mandrel, which you know is a ring sizer thing. Uh, I'm going to use it to anchor my rings on it while I add my resin because I want them to be flush against it. Now, there's pluses and minuses using a solid object like this, okay? Um, there's also a way to do it with just the tape and you could wrap that. I've done this before. Wrap it around your finger until you make a cylinder and then you can slip the rings on that and make sure that they're, that the cylinder is uh, just the right thickness that the ring sits flush all the way around. And you just can keep it on your finger and work on it that way. And um, the plus to that is that when you're ready to remove the ring, you can just slip that off your finger and then collapse it because it's just tape uh, in order to get the ring off. So the negative about using the mandrel is that I have to really kind of work a little bit and maybe even use my my uh, a tool or two to get it off the mandrel because it's on this solid tight object. But it's doable, but then you, sometimes you can wreck it. I've done that before. If I try pulling it off too soon before I have enough layers, it'll just break apart. So that's the negative, but also keep in mind if you've got it on your finger, um, you're minus a, a usable hand while doing your work. So, you know, there's a minus to that too. But I just wanted to tell you there are other ways. So here I am, of course, using the pill top because, hey, why not? Before I throw it out anyway, might as well take advantage of it. And I only need to mix a little bit. And that's some UV resin and black pigment. So now what I'm going to do here, you've seen me already put a thin layer of clear all the way around. And that's just kind of to anchor the rings in place. Um, now I'm going to put the color in. And uh, I just had a conversation with a subscriber the other day about uh, nail gel. And if you can use that with resin. And yes, you can with UV resin because that also gets cured by the UV light. And, you know, that might be a way for you to be able to, say, get away with uh, using a black polish uh, to be more opaque and just having to do maybe one or two coats. Okay, so I mean, there's there's a reason for that. With this, 
Um, I don't like to put too much pigment because then it affects the curing. You need to have, you know, uh, like a ratio of, I think, like for the regular epoxy, it's like, I think under 10% or 5% or something. I use very little of the mica and colors and things you add to the resin. And it's kind of the same with the UV. Uh, the UV light's got to be able to penetrate. So uh, the pigment, you can't have that be super opaque. And you just do uh, multiple layers, which is what I'm doing here. So that's what I'm using. And then I'm going in and I'm just doing section at a time, smoothing it along, sticking it under the um, UV light and letting it just do its thing. Also, let me just mention, I am using J-Diction UV resin for this. Plus I use their regular uh, long curing epoxy resin. There's also other products that they sell besides resin. And if you're interested in checking them out, go into my description below and you'll find a link that if you go in through that link and end up shopping and, and ordering something, you'll get 10% off. So make sure you do that if you're going to check out their products. And the same with BB Craft. I have a discount code down there too. And BB Craft is uh, a company sells a bazillion things, but I have gotten a lot of my jewelry hardware and small items like that for jewelry making, etc. from them. So check them out too. Also in the description below is all the product info I can give you if I can remember where I got some things that I've had forever. Or a I'll give you a suggestion as to where you'll be able to find it. And my contact info, my Amazon wish list, if you should feel that you want to support me as an artist, you know, you could you can do that. Otherwise, what I really appreciate is giving me a thumbs up, leaving me a comment, sharing the video, all those things really, really help me with the algorithms on YouTube because the more they see a uh, number of shares and views, the more they put you in rotation, which gets you more shares and views. So it's kind of a cycle the way it works. And so I really appreciate anything you can do like that. And of course, if you haven't subscribed as yet, I sure hope that you will. It's free. And if you click the bell, you'll be able to get notifications every time I post a video. So think about that too. And if not, that's fine. Give me a thumbs up or whatever. I appreciate it. And also, if you, hey, if you have any other comments or questions, um, no problem. Put, put the question in the comments. Or if you've done something and found an easier way, please let me know. I am not, you know, uh, super professional with this. Uh, a lot of these things I'm, I'm experimenting with. I get an idea in my head and think, I wonder how I can make that happen. And that's how I do it. But that doesn't mean there's not an easier way. So I appreciate anything, any advice or tips you might have for me too. So here I am popping out the little heart. Isn't that cute? Putting that little holographic heart that absolutely uh, was amazing that it fit perfectly in the little mold like it was made for it. But putting that in there added that um, iridescent holographic um, look to it, you know, like using that kind of iridescent film and uh, then putting the red glitter behind it just accentuated it, I think. And the gem has uh, facets. And I love that little um, mold. Uh, it's got all these shapes, as you saw, and most of them are faceted so that they can come out looking like a gem, which is really cool. And just as some of my other things that I've used, that was actually 
a free gift that came with an order for something else, uh, some other mold or whatever I must have ordered, and then there that was. So that's another thing. I can't tell you the actual um, company that makes it or whatever. It just came in a plain plastic bag, but it's turned out to be really invaluable for a whole lot of uh, small things that I've needed to make. And there's hearts, as you see, but there's also stars and just other, all the other kind of gem shapes you could find. I think there's even like a little uh, crescent moon. There's, there's some cool stuff in there when you need small things. So anyway, just wanted to say that. And now a quick story of my latest boo-boo. Uh, I wanted to make a alien head tree topper for my little two foot Christmas tree I put up with aliens around it. I am cosmic Carol after all. So I, I took my mold material, but I didn't have enough silicone mold material to make the full head. So I laid the face in and ended up making an alien mask, and I figured I'll use my UV resin, which I did, to make the little mask and pop it out, and I'm going to put it inside a mold, uh, secure it around the edges so resin doesn't get in front of it, and pour in the rest of the resin to make the bulbous head that the mask will then be part of, okay, using the same color so it'll all go together. Well, I couldn't find a mold that would work. So it suddenly hit me. I had this really pretty crystal brandy or cognac glass in my china closet that I've never used because I don't drink cognac. And so I take that and I cover it with plastic. I seal the mask against the plastic thinking, okay, and now the crystal will be just fine when I take it out. And you're probably, if you've ever seen the glass I'm talking about, know that that was the dumbest thing you could possibly do because once the bottom hardens, it'll never come out the top because the glass is big, rounded at the bottom and small at the top. This is not a um, mold that I can pull open to get it out. So, duh, I ended up having to put it in a plastic bag, smash the beautiful crystal cognac glass, and then when I take it out, turns out that I didn't seal it well enough and resin got all in the front and covered the mask anyway, so I had a big alien head blob, which was a total disaster. So, this story is just to tell you that no matter how much you've done resin, you will always make some kind of a dumb mistake somewhere along the line. Hopefully, it won't be as dumb as me. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because that was absolutely silly when I realized what I had done. It like, hit me with a ton of bricks and I was like, oh, you know, so much for that glass. So, that was really good, Carol. Uh, so I just had to share it all with you because I thought that would give you a laugh. But anyway, as you can see, I am now putting on the final coats of clear to just make sure everything's nice and shiny and sealed all together. And you just want to make sure it's smooth and you do it in sections all the way around and you should be good to go. And then once it all looks good, like it's coated, and, and you can also do the inside, by the way, if you want. Just let it cool down some because it is hot from being under the light. And then there you go. And now here comes the finished ring. Okay, it was so reflective. It was tough to get a, a good, clean shot of it. But I think that you can see, especially the heart in the center, how the colors reflect. I using that little confetti heart. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, please stay safe, be kind, and have a great day.